You are listening to Inspiring Table Talks with Kalpita and Vidya. Today on Inspiring Table Talks, we speak to Rosa Fanny Kerk. She is a woman who sits in the courtroom and wears heels. And when she's not in the courtroom, she has a crown and a sash. Not only that, she has a love and a passion for riding horses and giving back. She runs several businesses and is very passionate about giving back through NGO work. A warm welcome to you, Rosa. Thank How are you, you doing on this cold day? Thank you so much ladies for having me. It's an absolute honor and privilege for me and I'm doing super well because I can speak to two beautiful ladies and be joined by you today. And we're super super excited to speak to you today and to spend the day with you. I'm going to go right into this. I I believe that your journey is very diverse. um and it is incredible in terms of the amount of healing you've had to do on yourself which you were, because you were completely bedridden um and it was because of your horse riding passion which you still love today so <laughs> we want to just get into that i don't know um we found that very fascinating that you went from being in the bed and building yourself up you want to tell us a little bit about that Okay so that's such an interesting story actually um my daughter is now 14 years old but it was 4 years back and she started to force riding and I fell in love with her horse her horse and I said okay I must probably then get my own one and I got my own horse but because I was 40 at that stage everybody said to me Rosa you're not going to be able to ride you know you'll never make it that type of thing And I'm the type of person that you know you mustn't say that to me. <laughs> you know, I'll say, "Ah, uh-uh, I will do it. I will show you, and I will take pictures to prove it." So, um, what happened actually was, uh, it has been a long four years. It took me four years to actually get you know good riding skills. But in those four years, and that is what happened, I had a huge accident with my horse. His name is Safir. And to such an extent that um I was in hospital for 3 4 days and then they said that I must just be in you know in bed for 2 weeks now being myself and also being an attorney I'm not somebody to sit still mm-hmm. and the show must go on you know you must still do all of your work yeah. so um I was lying there in bed and I I've, I've always had a love for makeup always and then i was scrolling through the makeup on facebook and um i actually did a, a image consulting course way way back just because i was interested in fashion and i decided okay let's open a page and i was posting pictures of makeup there and then the lady started asking but why you will you do my makeup and i'm like yeah no problem you know but i you know i've no formal training i at that stage i didn't have any formal training and um then more and more people started to ask and i i thought to myself okay let's just hold like a class to teach the ladies because here in the western and especially in western area where i live um we don't even have a wimpy to give you an idea <laughs> wow. so there's no no <laughs> okay seriously seriously <laughs> So um it's a small mining town so we don't have all of the luxuries that you guys have in the city and I thought to myself okay let's let's make a class you know just advertise a makeup class and I thought to myself ah oh, you know you're not Bobby Brown who's going to come to your class everybody knows you as an attorney so who's going to come nobody's going to come and I had the class and it was full and I had the second class and it was full and then after that yeah the the makeup the where the women makeup was born wow and there's a there's an a, the crown up story goes with the worthy women makeup story so yeah we'll get into that, that is, 
Yeah. We definitely. Are. But I think what I liked um and why this stood out to me is because you used this time and considering how much people are going through lockdown, uh, it can be emotionally draining, physically draining. Um and your experience with the horse riding accident basically also put you in a similar position where you couldn't do much. But you used the time to come up with something that is important to you um and you also use that to have an impact in a different way and i feel like now in lockdown time a lot of people feel there isn't much they can do but sometimes just sitting back and reflecting like you went back to a course you did all that time back you know it wasn't something yeah. recent so it's for people to use this time and i want them to see that they can use this time to make something that is important and valuable to them I think it's important to do that because you have two choices in life. You can fall down or you can rise up. And um especially now in this time we need hope and we need positivity and we need passion. And when there's something that you're trying to do and you at least have something to stand up for in the morning, then you know okay, I've got a purpose. And when you've got a purpose, you've got a plan and then you run with that plan and suddenly lockdown is not that bad anymore. Yeah. So these these the two choices you have in life. You can you can wake up to yeah. love your purpose. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think with the lockdown lots of people are are trying out what they passionate about, not just going to yeah. a 9 to 5 job where they forced to do something they they don't always enjoy. Uh so, That is yeah, that is what I've been, that's what I've been seeing in Facebook and that is what is so amazing. Suddenly you have people that are popping up doing their own businesses and um, people started you know baking uh, making bread and food. I think you guys saw my video on <laughs> the food that I burned for Father's Day. I see. So I Uh, that's not my my specialty <laughs> but i mean you are you are 100% correct there is so many people that now actually at the time to think if today is my last day and i can do something that i really want not something just that i'm getting paid for that is paying the salaries what would i do yeah and um i spoke to a friend of mine um um two days ago and she said to me she's feeling very she's feeling very emotional and mentally you know she's not it's we all go through that mentally we we, we get into a dip and i said to her okay if you if you have to live for one day and you can do anything in the world that you want what would you do and she said no i would teach people how to dress and i said but there's your answer and that yeah. immediately gives her that spark and the energy and everything that goes with it so yes you are it's you are 100% correct people are now realizing um that they can live their passion and that is important if you have that passion the tendency la passione destino if you have your passion your passion leads to your destiny and that's wonderful i think it's i think this is actually a good time because it's a a water shedding time um for a lot of things in our lives. Mhm. That's true. Yeah. That's very very true. Rosa, I find it very fascinating that you went from the courtroom to being a pageant queen. Um it's very unconventional especially because you did not give up one to pursue the other. Um but in fact you pursued them together. Can you tell us how this happened for you? Okay, um this is this is going back to my domestic violence situation when I was at varsity studying law. Um I had I was engaged to a guy that um physically, emotionally, um psychologically abused me. And um he also you know was um messing around and when I found out about him seeing other women I asked him listen are you you know why why and he said to me if you you know if you were not so fat and ugly I would have not messed around yeah and I'm like oh my god he told it to me was like 
Excuse me? Excuse me. How dare you? Okay, but that that for yeah, how dare he? But in that for a long time stuck here in my head and I was I remember I was um, in treatment for two years and nothing helped and then this the, the psychologist said to me that yeah it's strange how God works. Is the psychologist said to me that woman at that stage that was the Mrs. World, she was filing for divorce from her husband that was also messing around with other women. And she said to me, well, if the most beautiful woman in the world can have a husband that um, messed around, then why can't it happen to anybody else? And that clicked with me. And she explained to me that it's I couldn't be more prettier, more thinner, more whatever. It is his choice, his decision. Yeah. It's something broken in him. You know, it's not me. But um, psychologically, it did leave some scars. So um, how Crown Up happened was, I, you know, as a lawyer, you guys must stop me if I talk too much. No, it's <laughs> Because fine. I'm used to... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, as a lawyer, I speak a lot. And, and then as a makeup artist, people also ask me to come speak. And I remember this one woman... She um, was a pastor in a church that opened here in Western area. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, Rosa, will you please come and speak about um, the Christian women and makeup and how you bring the two together? Oh, wow. And I said, yes, no problem, no problem. And as a lawyer, I prepared this 14 spread page and I did my research all the way from Cleopatra, you know. <laughs> Actually, she was very cool. She was the one that first made the call around the eyes. Yeah. So, I, I had before pictures, after pictures, the history. I had a, you know, like a slideshow, the whole thing. And that night I prayed and I said to God, you know what, it doesn't feel right, this, you know, whole thing that I've here yeah, now done. What should I tell this? What should I tell the women? Because I always try to say I must be my authentic self, mm -hmm. you know. And God said to me, "There's only one thing that you must tell the women. When I create a baby girl, I create a beautiful, I create a perfect, and I create a with an invisible crown. But during your life, that crown can fall off." If somebody tells you something like you're fat or you're ugly, but when you polish the outside of a woman with makeup, all of the inner beauty that what it is really about, it shines through and she puts back on her God-given crown. Aww. And that is why my message is called Crown Up. And I've seen it in my makeup classes. You know, the before pictures, nobody has makeup on. Everybody's like... And the after pictures is like, you know, <laughs> make a man, the whole thing. So, yes. it's, it's amazing. So that I realized that because I went through that domestic abuse um, and it broke me inside, I could use this message of crown up to speak to other broken women and help them to heal. Because there's not a woman in this world that has not felt at some stage that she's not good enough or pretty enough or um, she's not in some form broken because of something that has happened to her. There was a powerful um, message. Yeah. Thank you. And then how it happened with um, going into pageantry, I was doing makeup with stage line professional makeup mm -hmm. and we used to go to, to um, the theaters and do the finalist makeup and this one woman I was doing her makeup and she said but why don't you enter Mrs. Grant and I said to her honey look at me you know <laughs> I'm not 1.8 meters tall I'm Italian I'm curvy um, you know and I'm I'm too fat for this you know I'm not skinny skinny like you guys and she said to me no man you'll be perfect and I thought ah it's just because I can wipe off your your eyebrows in two seconds you know that's why you're nice <laughs> so um, and then another friend of mine um, you guys maybe know her Eunasia Moedin she was Eunasia uh, Suleiman but she's now Eunasia Moedin 
she's got the brow bar and um, she was doing my brows one day and she said friend why don't you enter Mrs. South Africa and I said the same to her I said to her no man I'm too fat and too short for it she said to me listen if you feel that you've got weight issues um, do something about it but you'll be perfect for it mm-hmm. and I said oh friend it's just because you love me thank you bless your soul but it's just because you love me and uh, I believe that God speaks in threes me eh? Okay. And this, the, and up to two days later, somebody uh, placed or they published, published, and um, the Mrs. Grant entry form on my Facebook page. And when I went on Facebook and I saw that, I was like, <gasps> literally, <laughs> was so like, clear on the message. Yeah, <laughs> it's a message. God is speaking. And I'm like, oh no, uh, uh, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I've never done pageantry, I've never done modeling, I'm a horse rider, we ride with open legs, you know, we ride like this, there's no way that I can do this, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> you know how we are, we, we, you know, we mm-hmm. fight with God sometimes, mm-hmm. and we were like having a chat, me and, me and the big man, eh, and I said to him, ha, ah, it's not gonna work, ha, ah, ha, 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 And he said to me, you cannot go around and spread the message of crown up if you are too afraid to put back on your own crown. Wow. And I said, oh, okay, okay. So I entered, but because I didn't have any background, I sent a selfie with me and my horse uh, (laughs) as my entry picture, like literally, you know, a selfie that I took. (laughs) me and my horse and I left it and uh, it, I think two months went by and then the one lady phoned me and she said oh listen I'm from Mrs. Grant and you made the top 10 I'm like oh, what <laughs> top 10 already <laughs> wow said, yeah already the top 10 and I'm like ah this can't be and she said to me but you know what maybe you would just like to Go and take some professional pictures, <laughs> you know, like not with your horse and not a selfie. I'm like, is that how you do it? And she said, yes, you you know, they're going to put up and you can still go back on Mrs. Grant's page and you will see all of the 10 ladies that, you know, they were professionally dressed, uh, professional make, make, you know, the photograph, makeup, everything. And there's a photo of Rosanna Horse. <laughs> so you got into this pageant as you said it was your sign of three you believe god works in threes but yes. prior to this you also were doing ngo work already and then you got the platform then you also started talking about the abuse situation and um, i want to take it back to the video you made on facebook Oh yes, yes. Um, uh, when I came back from the Emmys Universe competition in Miami last year, I came back to the news that there was a um, at that stage a lot of women being killed and raped, and especially this one lady. And I was it just you know it just infuriates me as somebody that went through that. It just infuriated me. And I decided, you know what, what does it help for me to have a platform, but not use that platform? And I decided, well, I'm going to do something about this. I'm not going to stay silent. I always say, let it be known that I'm not the queen that will keep the mouth shut. (laughs) (laughs) So, because I'm a makeup artist, I did my FX makeup, you know, and I used all the makeup and stuff and it really it looked, um, real. looked real and I was I, I, I was doing a message and I was saying you know this is how you look this is how it feels and it's it's not fair that what, how a woman is being treated how a woman is dying how a woman is being raped how a woman is being tortured um, a woman's life in South Africa at this stage is we're like an endangered species literally And I made that video and it just went viral, boom, like that. And um, 
there was some negativity about the video uh, from the men's side because they, you know, they don't like a lady literally being so straightforward and telling it like it is. Yes. The ladies on the other hand was like, you go girl, you know, they yes. loved it. And then there was a third component of people that was, you know, thinking, you know, did this really happen to Rosa? You know, is you know, this the situation? But it was just the FX makeup. But it had such an impact um, that there was a lot of ladies that afterwards was sending me messages and saying thank you so much for making this video. Thank you for um, making it so real that men can see what we go through. Yes. And that it's not just something that we just, you know, um, walk or have a march about or we complain about. This is something that is affecting every woman in South Africa. Yes. And I, I have not personally spoken to a woman that it has not affected in some way, whether it's verbal, whether it's physical, whether it's psychological. So for me, as an attorney with this background, mm -hmm. um, I love doing family law. I love doing um, my domestic violence, my maintenance, my divorces. People tell me, you're crazy to love doing divorces. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. I love it. So if somebody comes into my office and tells me, listen, I'm in a domestic violence abuse situation, you can just literally, you know, because I've been through it, just connect with this woman and say, I understand. I understand. I understand what happens to you. I understand that you're afraid to leave. I understand that... Um, you stay understand that you need the courage you know yeah. you can literally lift this woman and say but you have rights there's stuff that you can do i can help you don't be scared anymore because a lot of women stay because they don't have finances they stay because they don't have um, the support system they stay because they're scared they stay because they're so psychologically broken down and, and everybody always asks the question, and they ask me as well, I said, Rosa, you've got such a strong personality. Yeah. Why did you stay? You know, I stayed for three years. Why did you stay? Um, but you've been broken down mentally so much that you believe that you're worth nothing, that nobody would look at you, nobody wants you. Um, you know, if you are being physically abused that you were looking for it, you know, stuff like that. And that is not something that anybody that does not go through it would understand. So the moment I have a client like that, I become a pit bull, honey. Let me tell you that. <laughs> the biggest pit bull you can find. But I think it's, it's not that you like getting people divorced. I think people need to understand it's like you like helping women come out of toxic situations. So you yeah, know, a woman can come out of... A yeah, if, if people can come out of a toxic situation, then you feel that's the right thing to do. Because it's better to be divorced than come home dead because of abuse. You know, it's something unnatural. I think you just, you know, um, put it in a better way um, and a better understanding. That is why I like doing divorce cases. Because you can actually help the women get out of that toxic relationship, get out of that abuse, help the children to get maintenance. So it's not a contract that you just draw and you give to the person. Mm -hmm. You physically make difference in somebody's life. And um, I've been to a wedding a while ago where this lady that got married, I was doing a maintenance case for when she was still a little girl wow. and um, I helped her mom and she, she came to me and she just hugged me and she said, Tanya Rosa, you know, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be like here today getting married and I'm like, no nonsense, of course you would. But that is so fulfilling. It's, with, I, I, it's fulfilling for me to see that you can actually help and you can do something and the circumstances change. Yes. It's not just lip service. Yes. 
and it's the same thing with yeah. makeup it's it's um it's not just helping women it's exactly like your message from god came it's not just oh i'm going to make you look beautiful i want your inside beauty to shine outwardly yes because if a woman is healed on the inside and she feels beautiful on the inside then it it literally shines through to the outside and then she has her confidence back mm-hmm. and that is what is most important because let me tell you um looks fade you yeah. know makeup fade all of that fades but a beautiful heart um that doesn't fade and also a healed heart so much of so many people have broken hearts that they that they give to the you know the consequences goes to the children or yes. to the partners or whoever so if you're not healed in yourself you know 100% you cannot love 100% yeah that is true that is so true yeah that is very very true and there's um there's a lot of stigma around divorce especially in the indian community um for someone to 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 get a divorce it's actually like a shameful thing so they rather stay in a relationship for years and be unhappy but it's more the older generation that still has the stigma but actually coming out of it you 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 only heal in that way by coming out of that toxic relationship listen my mom is italian so it's the same with the italian um community as well um you know you don't get divorced that's like you don't get divorced that's mm-hmm. just how i was brought up as well it's like a sin to get divorced that type of thing and it's like shame on the family if you get divorced yeah So I understand yes. that but it like you say it's more with the older generation mm. but um when that woman decides to take that step to stand up for herself and then just go forward with her life and with her children I actually the most interesting divorce that I did was for a lady and she was 86 years old wow. and I said to her but ma'am You 86 years old, you know, can't you just like stay a little bit longer, you know? And <laughs> yes. she said to me, she's been staying for the children for all the years, they grown up now, they have their own children. And actually her children came to her and they said to her, "Listen, mom, we wish you would have done this years ago because then it would have been better for everybody." um for yeah. the children and for her. and I was like that's wisdom that's really really wisdom but if anyone is going through it affects the whole family so it's it does emotional draining for everyone it does um personally I also have divorced parents so that's why I understand that because it does rub off on the children and children are not stupid um it doesn't matter if they elder children or younger children but it is a enormous emotional situation to go through not just for the parents with the divorce but after the divorce the effects is much more on the children because the parents get remarried but the children now sit with trust issues they sit with emotional issues if they were abused they sit with those kind of issues so i understand um the traditional way and as a christian woman i also believe that you know you have to work on your on your marriage but if there comes a point that it's not it's toxic it's not good for you or your children then i think god will give his blessing you know because god didn't make us to be unhappy yes um and then get a, ma- a divorce that's very true but now i'm curious what happened to the 86 year old woman after the divorce yeah <laughs> we actually me and her, it was in the high court in Johannesburg and um after the divorce we went down and there was a small little cafe and she's like 
Are we gonna have a glass of red wine? Oh. Oh no. <laughs> yes. Let's do that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> we had a glass of red wine and she chatted and I'm like, are you not gonna cry or you know because normally you know the women they cry. You know, you I always take some tissues and stuff with. She's like. My kind of a swell play, yeah, it's here, need, yeah, need. <laughs> so that was that was quite a funny divorce. I must tell you that. <laughs> yeah, but it's also it it comes with you know it's as funny as it is. It's got so much of wisdom in it that she did what she had to do. But she's even at the age of eighty six, she was not afraid to live for herself. So age should never stop you from doing that. It's so true because I mean, even at her age, she realized that this is not good for me anymore, and she wanted to literally live the last years that she has as happy years. Yeah. And it taught me actually a big lesson. You know, she her, now her children is okay. There's no, you know, the children is fine. Everything is fine. So now she can go and she can be happy. Yeah. Um and and that was amazing to actually see, you know, that you can get, you can gain happiness at at any age. Yeah. That's true. That is very very Yeah, true. even if it's the last few years of your life. Yeah. Yeah, even if it's the last few, few years. But, you know, which what what was a little bit sad about that is that it took a ITC years yeah. to you know because of tradition because mm-hmm. of you're not supposed to get divorced it will be shameful on the family you know all of that it took her 86 years and then she decided no finito i'm done and i'm gonna you know have a happy few with last years yeah. so happiness is is so important Absolutely. That is so so true. But now we're going to shift gears a bit. Um you hold the title for Miss Universe World International 2019. Yes. So you've been to Miami as you've mentioned. Um and I remember our conversations earlier there were times when you had to deal with a bit of hate. How oh, yes. how did you I mean people judged you for the way you look. I remember us having this conversation where they told you you still need to look a bit more thinner and leaner and you're going to represent the country and you were like my friend I was feeling that initially but then you came back with the crown. Yeah, yeah, I was um actually you know I worked so hard to, um women are built a certain way, you know, and I'm built it and in way we have we we have hips and you know we 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 just voluptuously build so i'll never be that straight you know up and down model look and um i remember we were shooting with Dennis Lloyd my traditional way and i was so proud i in the mornings i went to the gym and i gym for an hour in the evenings i went to the gym and i gym for an hour and the photos just came out and me and Dennis were so proud of it and then i got this message you know from Well, this lady, I assume, and she said, you know, can't you just work on the, you know, your upper arms because you're actually representing South Africa, and you should look good while doing that. And I remember I was hysteric. Mm-hmm. I was hysteric. I phoned Dennis and I cried. I phoned the lady that taught me how to do uh, the proper, you know, uh, catwalk. how to do that I cr- I phoned and I cried I phoned the photographer and I cried and I said can you please just my maybe just can't you just photoshop you know so it looks better or you know anything and it really it, you know it it literally gave me a knock you know it gave my confidence a knock and then um I went to see somebody and that uh, uh, I went to see a prophet and we he spoke with me and all of that and he said to me you know what Rosa you've got the the, the prophecy of of queen esther over your life so queen esther went and she because of the way she looked 
she prayed that was the important part she prayed and she saved the nation so you have a job to do it's not about the crown it's about you going there god wanting you to go there and there's a reason for you to go there whether you get a crown or not but i must be honest in my heart um you know beforehand which crowns are you know up for grabs Yes. And there was the, uh, the the petite crown, the MS Universe petite crown, and I was like, oh, God, please let me win that crown. Please <laughs> let me win that crown. I want that crown, and I want another one. I want that crown, because the petite, you know, is um, if you are uh, shorter than 1.64 meters, then you fall in the petite category. And because I'm older, I'm older than 40, um, that was my category along with another. But I wanted that crown, you know, because now I got this message of, can't you just, you know, become thinner, you know, you make a look at your arms and everything. So actually, that evening when we when we had our finals, I was standing there and they were calling out everybody else's names, and I'm like, oh my word, you know, oh, feels like I'm gonna, you know, become crying. <laughs> you have to stand and pose and smile. And yet, the back of your mind, your mind is going like this the whole time. I'm like, oh, please God, please God, please God, you know. And um, when they called out MS, and uh, they called out MS Universe World International Petite, and they said South Africa, you will see on my photos. I was like, this is my first reaction, and it was like, I wanted to cry. I wanted to cry because it it was the emotional component of being told. That you're not good enough mm-hmm. with the um, the hard work and the belief that your um, that your prophecy came true, and you know this is what God destined for you. He destined the specific crown for you, as um, as I was just at that moment. I just I just said thank you, God. Yeah. You know, and I I made like this, and I couldn't. I, it it was it just came naturally. Um, it it was something that I was just like Instinctive. praising God and saying, "Just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I prayed for this. I prayed for this specific for this specific crown. I prayed for this. I I think I I prayed it loose. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but, that's that's how it happened. But again, it just shows there will always be people out there who will say things. Um, it shouldn't let us question our own self worth or confidence or make us doubt uh, who we are. No, but in a you know, if you can be honest, in in that moment, you do you do feel it. You know, it yeah. it, it 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 does hurt you, and then you just have to realize, but. You know, put back on your crown, believe your prophecy, and walk your walk. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't matter who said what. There will always be haters. I always say, I walk my talk. So if I said I'm coming for this, I'm coming for this. Yeah. And I said I'm coming for that crown, no matter what that person said. So yeah, it it was it was special. But it's a hard. It was a hard lesson for me to learn, to realize that, you know, you will have haters. You will have people that will tell you you are not good enough. Um, but you must. You must just stand on your prophecy. You must stand on your word of God, and you must believe in yourself. Yes. Then you're ninety percent there. That's true. That is so so true. Yeah. But on a light, on a lighter note, we have to, we can't let you go without talking about makeup. Um, not only do you teach women how to be confident and train them, well, teach them how to be for beauty pageants and mentor them for beauty pageants, but you also have good makeup skills, great makeup skills, in fact. Um, I I still remember <laughs> oh, thank seeing you. You're welcome. I remember seeing your. Your Facebook video with the abuse one, and I thought, wow, this is real. This looks so real, but it was makeup. But on a lighter note, what are some of your um, favorite makeup trends and favorite makeup m- makeup room memories from the pageant? 
you know, my my favorite makeup memory is always um, when I do makeup for a lady and she just before she goes on stage, and you can see. I always say makeup artists, their hearts is for other people to look beautiful. That's all we want, you know. We just want them to feel beautiful and look beautiful and have that confidence. And um, the moment you finish with the makeup, I always turn the ladies around and I say, no, 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 don't. you're not allowed to look. So we, then it's a, you know, like a reveal because otherwise every five minutes she's going to look and be like, okay, this or that or whatever. Yeah. And then when she sees herself the, the first time, that's amazing. And then she puts on that dress and suddenly she transforms, you know, just in this beautiful queen. And that is what I want for every woman, to know that she's good enough, to know that she's a queen and know that she can go after anything in her life. And I think my other personal uh, favorite makeup um, memory was one of the ladies that came to one of the makeup classes. She was born without any hair, so she didn't have any eyebrows, nothing, nothing. She didn't have arms, you know, hair on her arm, hair, any, any hair, that type of thing. And I teach the ladies how if you, you know, have thinner brows, our generation, we overpluck the brows. So, you know, you can make it thicker. <laughs> and um, I taught the ladies how to, you know, do with wax, do brows. And when that lady saw herself in the mirror for the first time and she had brows, she started to cry. Aww. The whole class started to cry with her as well. I cried. It was just makeup. It was just like lipstick and mascara the whole place <laughs> around. We all just cried. And um, I remember the next day, her husband phoned me and he said to me, I just want to thank you for giving me my wife back. Aww. Suddenly, I have a confident beautiful wife and not just from outside but she's like beaming like sunlight and it was such a small change and it made my heart so happy it's that special that somebody who didn't have it it becomes something so personal it is. it's so personal it is. and so valuable that is a beautiful and it's story. something that um, that she was teased about as well and yeah. it was an insecurity for her so yeah. for her it changed such a small thing but it changed her whole her whole perspective on life and how she felt about herself something so we take was, for granted it's beautiful wow that's beautiful beautiful yeah. story that Ibidia and I both have this thing where we want women to start to learn to lift each other you know stop hating on one another stop pulling the other one down if you can straighten her crown do it if you can't then just mind your own business and don't say something nasty man just don't say anything nasty if you can be nice be nice if you can't it's I love that and for me it makes your pageant and the work you do so much more important because it's not just I want to look pretty and I want you to look pretty. I want you to know how to treat yourself and treat others. So, yeah, yeah. that is deep. That is deep. Yeah. A life is hard enough with everything we have to deal with. So, why not uh, help each other along the way instead of breaking each other down? I mean, as women, we know how difficult uh, things we need to face can be. Absolutely. There's a culture among women that they would rather break another woman down than build another woman up. And that's something that I did a video um, about, I think, two weeks ago, that I did a video about and there was in my situation some online bullying and i just decided i had enough and then i just said you know what ladies let's build each other up you know 
um, one flower doesn't look at another flower to bloom. So just bloom, be you, stay in your own lane, you know, build your own empire. And then if you are secure in yourself, you are not going to be threatened by somebody else and their success. You're actually going to be glad for them. Yes. Because you know how much it took and you know how difficult the road is and you know what you have to overcome, all the obstacles to get there. So if women can get in a place, and that's what I'm trying to teach, where they can be confident in themselves, then they will be glad for another woman, you know, and really uplift, not just lip service, lip, you know, okay, we must uplift each other. Do it. Tell her. And that's why I started the hashtag, I'm proud of you. So that people can, because I can feel you know down today and somebody can give me a compliment and suddenly my whole day changes uh, and especially the, the word proud you know it's not like I like you or whatever so if there were the, I saw the lady started to do the hashtag and it, it, it was so heartwarming because they started to reach out to other ladies and said you know, whatever the whatever they wanted to say and said, hashtag I'm proud of you. And that was beautiful to see how one sister, because we all sisters at the end of the day, lift up each other and support each other. So, you know, somebody you can you can I look at your skin and I'm like, Wow, you've got clear, amazing skin. Say to you know, you've got beautiful skin. I'm proud of you. And it will it will make you feel good, and that's what we need. There's so much hate in this world that we don't have to dish it out to each other. Yeah, I just want a few closing words and words of wisdom that you want to share with others. And your message. Okay, I think that my closing words would be my motto. Um, I live by the words, get up, and then pray up, crown up, and rise up. Amen. Because if you, amen, if you do it in that sequence, you can't do anything. Without God, you have to get up. You have to pray up to get the strength for the day. You have to crown up so that you remember who you are, that you are worthy and that you are good enough. And then you rise. And when you rise, you become unstoppable. And that's what we need. We need lionesses of women. Yes, we do. We do. So Rosa, where can people find you? Where can they contact you? Um, they, can, they can contact me um, on social media, on my page, Rosa van Attorneys, and also um, for, for pageants, MS Universe World International Petite 2019, Rosa van Ikerk, MS Universe World International Petite. They can find me uh, for makeup on Worthy Women Makeup. And yeah, then they can also co- uh, contact my office. It's uh, Rosa van Ikerk Tennis, 10 Okay, and we'll and, share yeah. those details on our anchor description box and on our Instagram page. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. My Instagram page is um, Rosa van Ikerk Castellino. Okay. Because Castellino is my Italian surname. So they, they will find me there as well. Okay, <laughs> so we'll add all of that in. Thank you for listening to Inspiring Table Talks. And remember to favorite Inspiring Table Talks on Anchor, as well as to follow us on Instagram at inspiring.tabletalks. And if you would like to be a guest on the podcast, you can email us at contactkpv108 at gmail.com.